Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm giving you secant of theta equals 2. And I say cotangent of theta is less than 0. So let's just, for, 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 for. let's just focus right now on the triangle. All right? So if secant of theta equals 2, remember um, secant of theta represents the hypotenuse over the adjacent, right? Yes? Because cosine of theta represents the adjacent over the hypotenuse. They're reciprocals of each other. So therefore, if I know secant, I can rewrite this then as 2 over 1. Yeah? So can I create a triangle off of that information? Yes. OK. So everybody usually gets to this point, and they do all right. They say, OK, secant, that's hypotenuse over my adjacent side, which is 1. Very good. Now, can we figure out what this third side is? Yeah, of course we can, right? So we say 1 squared plus x squared equals 2 squared. So therefore, um, 1 plus x squared equals 4, minus 1 minus 1, x squared equals 3, square root, square root, x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. Now here's where we come into a problem. Because remember, ladies and gentlemen, whenever you introduce the square root, you have to include a positive and a negative. Well, am I taking the square root to find the hypotenuse? No. So I know it can, this value is going to represent, this value represents the opposite side. That could be positive or negative. So I have actually two triangles that I could do. I could have a triangle that looks like this, square root of 3, 2, and 1. Would you guys agree? That would work. But why could it also not be this triangle? Would that still give you the exact same values? Do both of these give me sine of or secant of 2? Do both of those triangles give me secant of 2? Yes, because secant of 2 is just hypotenuse over opposite, or hypotenuse over adjacent. It doesn't matter if it's positive square root of 3 or negative square root of 3. So we need to make a distinction. Well, which problem are we going to do? Or do you guys want to do sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent for both of those triangles? No, that's not fun, right? So we go now. This is the whole purpose of why we have the constraint. So the constraint is going to help us determine which of those we're going to want to use. So the constraint says cotangent of theta is less than 0. So remember, cotangent represents x over y. So when you guys look at your quadrants, when is x over y going to be negative? Right? If these are your x and y coordinates, when do you take your x and y coordinate, put x over the y, and you're going to get a negative value? Which one? The second and the fourth. Which one of these triangles is in the second or the fourth? So you guys can see. So guess what? This triangle is not the correct triangle. Okay. So therefore, that's your triangle. This value is 1. This value is 2. I'll just do sine, cosine, and tangent, just so we can get this done and get home. Cosine of theta and tangent of theta. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's negative square root of 3 over 2. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 1 over 2. And tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. OK? And then obviously, ladies and gentlemen, you can do the reciprocal functions on your own for that. OK? So ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's all you guys really are going to be learning today. Um, there is, hold on, guys, hold on, hold on.